with that being said, I think uh, now's a good time to segue um, mm -hmm. to talk about our uh, our good friend Ron Dalton. Yes, who had a, who has a very popular uh, documentary that was um, at the uh, center of uh, the controversy over the NBA player Kyrie Irving tweeting a documentary. It was uh, Ron Dalton's documentary uh, titled uh, Hebrews to Negroes, I believe. It was from like 2018, you know, and uh, I think we're going to show a clip from this because I, I watched it and I tweeted about it. So we have a tweet I think you'll be pulling up. <laughs> By the way, while, while you're setting that up, I'll uh, respond to something in the chat. Uh, Manny Jones writes, DNA, flesh, does not inherit internal life. And then he, uh, eternal life, excuse me, and he quotes uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, we agree wholeheartedly. We're not saying that your salvation hinges on your lineage or anything like that. This is more of an intellectual question, uh, an intellectual exploration and, uh, you know, an academic question. Uh, because discussions with members of the diverse Israelite spectrum often uh, hinge on claims about lineage. It's not we're not saying that this your standing with God is impacted by your haplogroup or anything like that. But because discussions on lineage are often so central to discussions with Israelites, it becomes an interesting academic top topic to look into. How do you trace lineage? You know, what are the best tools for that? I personally think that why DNA is the best tool for available today for tracing or getting a sense of not only an individual's paternal line, but also the spectrum of paternal lines that can exist within a people group, whether it be like, um, you know, a specific morphological group or a linguistic group or even the entire uh, human species. And so, like I Absolutely. said, oh, Manny says, thank you. I'm grateful. And uh, if I'm if I can, I'm going to show the relevant tweet. Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully it and, shows up. Yep. I see it. Okay. So I'll read it where it says, Ron Dawson's 2018 film, Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America, claims the wide DNA of Native Americans, Australian Aboriginals, and Polynesians was found among the Neftufian samples. This is, at best, highly misleading, and at worst, flatly false. So I'll play the relevant portion. Let me just put my, uh, my uh, sound mix, and uh, hopefully you can hear Obtained from Dorothy Garab's Natufia skeletons found inside the caves in Israel dating back to data was obtained from Dorothy Garab's Natufia skeletons found inside the caves in Israel dating back to BC times. Now, these skeletons revealed the presence of the white DNA of the Allure tribe, the Dogon tribe in Mali, Native American Indians, Australian Aborigines, the Dravidian Indian, the Black Arab Bedouins, the Pacific Islanders, the Somalians, the Habesha people. In Ethiopia and the so-called Bantus Negro in Israel. So, uh, relevant to uh, that, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, can you explain, perhaps for the audience, uh, the uncarefulness of uh, such a statement? Well, it's just completely confusing. So, and that's often the case with Dalton. He throws a lot of spaghetti at the wall, and it's very hard to, you know, be sure what he's saying. It, oftentimes. It's clear that he himself is confused. Other times, maybe you say, all right, well, maybe the reader just doesn't understand what he's saying. Maybe there's just a lack of clarity. But yeah, what he seems to be saying that that was within a larger discussion about haplogroups. Right. So it seems to be that he's saying that the Natufians had haplogroups that are also found amongst Australian Aborigines and some Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Right. And I t spoke with other people who are familiar with this documentary, and they were saying that they're under the impression that what happened was Dalton looked at a paper, an old paper on the Natufians and saw CT that, you know, the CT was, it's, it's this sort of old macro haplogroup and it was put as a sort of placeholder because they couldn't really identify the, the, the full haplogroup of some of the Natufians. So they were listed as CT and Dalton saw CT. And then he saw that haplogroup C is found amongst the Australian Aborigines and a minority of native Americans. And therefore he leaped to the conclusion that uh, they have the same haplogroup as the Natufians, which is right. uh, it's confusion to put it mild. To put it mild. Right. So if we see it right here, it says E one B one B one originally classified as CT, but further defined as E one B one B one by uh, Martiano uh, in twenty twenty. So this was updated. This is the relevant paper updating the uh, information here. So if anybody is interested, uh, right. they can actually look at it right here. Uh, this is the relevant paper. So just uh, wanted to point that out. So this was originally published in... Uh, Looks like February 2022, if I'm mistaken. Well, it says 2022 uh, there, but there's actually a paper here. I'll 
go to the bottom. Here we go. So every everybody can see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. can, okay, good, good, good. Let me actually go to, uh, I believe it was this one, if it would go directly to it. And it would actually give the, uh, when the date it was, uh, let's see if it's. Oh, it's right there. It says 2020 there. December of 2020. Yeah, you see it? Yeah. Molecular. Ah, here it is. Yeah. yeah, here we go. Yep. Just wanted to point that out. All right. With that being said, just wanted to uh, have that on record. And uh, if we could, uh, just looking at the uh, relevant video, um, I just wanted to point this out because I think it's relevant. Um, if we could go through this briefly, because I think that's a very uncareful claim that he was attempting to make. And it, and it shows his unfamiliarity with DNA. Uh, uh, here we go. So this is a map of Y chromosomes uh, before the colonial period. All right. So this is a distribution. And I just wanted to maybe highlight some of this very briefly. So just to be clear, I don't see it on the screen yet. Yep. I'm showing it now. Okay. Here we All go. right. And I see it now. So if we can go to South America, we'll notice that the relevant haplogroups are uh, predominantly Q3 and C3. Mm -hmm. Right. Now. Mm -hmm. So two in North America. There's now, also some C. Now, when we go to the aboriginals, there's C4 and K4. However, let's look over here in uh, Africa. Matter of fact, even if one looks at the, the Middle East. But anyways, if we look at uh, Africa, interestingly enough, uh, well, there doesn't seem to be any any of these uh, haplogroups that are apparently supposed to be there. And, uh, you know, uh, oops, I don't know what happened. There. Oh, oh, actually, yeah. If we could, let me actually just bring this up since it's already here. That's a <laughs> yes, this is relevant. convenient segue. So if we could, this is the phylogenetic tree, right? Starting mm -hmm. at the top, going all the way down. So these are the various branches. And keeping in mind that these are uh, significant distances in, in time from each other. So this isn't like one year later or something like that. Mm -hmm. So as you can see uh, uh, by the relevant uh, 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 tree. Right. Uh, you have that branch for CT, which is. Basically, yeah. CT covers most human beings on the planet, right? Yeah. Those who carry haplogroup E, which would be the majority of the West African diaspora and therefore presumably the majority of um, African-Americans who identify as Israelites, have haplogroup E, which is, you know, a descendant of CT. And then for Native Americans and, and Australian Aborigines who have haplogroup C, that's also a descendant of CT. But the thing is. If you're going to make both E carriers and C carriers descendants of Jacob, you would have to put Jacob back at CT. And if it's the CT that right. gave rise to both E and C, that would cover basically the entire planet. Because then Correct. our carriers like myself uh, and maybe a, a friend of ours who we mentioned earlier, uh, our carriers would be Israelites. Everybody would be a descendant of Jacob on this kind yeah. of model. Just almost everyone Correct. with the exception of A and B carriers. Yeah. You well, know. well, se several of the the people that you mentioned, <coughs> guerrilla, yeah. Hebrew, guerrilla Hebrew, and almost um, the whole Mr. planet Pro would descend from Jacob. potentially, potentially even Mister Prospect if he does turn out to be uh, yeah. R. Well, no, yeah, either way because C T also descends from C T. Right, correct. You know, so everybody, yep. basically, all Ashkenazi Jews would be descent paternal descendants of. Uh, yeah, we have it right Jacob. here. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here goes, uh, the, which gave rise to T right there. So if we could just uh, pointing this out, so C T right. Gives rise to two branches, D, E, and C, F, right? And mm -hmm. from D, E is where you get E. Now, notice where E is here. C is over here. These are two different branches. These are not the same immediate people group. These are two separate people groups on two separate parts of the phylogenetic tree. Now, ultimately, all of these go back to, to one, as you can see right there. But uh, the point being that uh, you have C, you have E. So this is E. You have the C's over here, and the uh, Native Americans are all the way over here in Q. And uh, some C. There's a minority of C, which is what Yeah, there is a minority of C. Keep, keeping in mind that these Native Americans, they're not C because the progenitor gave rise to one son who was C and another son who was Q. Rather, you have different people groups, individual people groups, perhaps joining together, as mm -hmm. was the case in antiquity where, for example, you go to a region. You have an area where you have tribal groups that join together. And perhaps these tribal groups aren't even paternally, ethnically descended from the same base population of people, but social, but socially, uh, I guess in a sociological sense, they join together based on a language that perhaps both groups were born into. You know, a, a great example of that is the United States of America, 
where we live in a country where you have people with different lineages paternally, yet we have a shared language, in some instances, even shared cultures, uh, musical expressions, that kind of thing, uh, being that this is a melting pot. But uh, you can find this also being the case in antiquity in other parts of the world. So C and then perhaps Q came together. But what wouldn't be the case is that C and Q both have the same paternal progenitor. They would have different progenitors because they descend from different people groups. Yeah. I mean, to, to sum it up really easily, I would say I'd put it this way. To, it's because I think it captures how confused Ron Dalton is. If you're going to say that C, T, C carriers and E carriers both descend from Jacob, then almost the entire planet descends from Jacob. He undermines all his polemics against mainstream Jews, against European populations, because they all descend from CT, you know? And, and so it's it's it, it's indicative, with all due respect to Ron Dalton, it's indicative of the confusion that he has on the subject. And now that documentary was from 2018, but his confusion continues to this day because when people try to have conversations with him on DNA, he's all over the place. And he, he basically... Right. You know, he'll appeal the haplogroups and then he'll toss it out the window and try to like identify people as Semitic based on their outward appearance and their culture, right. you know? Correct. And if we could, I'd like to show a portion of your discussion with yes. uh, Mr. Dalton. Uh, it seems that Ron Dalton, um, and, and for the record, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he even had a debate with a Hebrew Israelite who uh, uh, does seem to have familiarity with uh, DNA. One, Yashub, uh, I believe. Genesis yes, from the Yap Gang. And, and honestly, in my opinion, yeah. Yashub ran the table in that debate. Yeah, you know? I, I would agree that Yashub uh, clearly uh, had a much, much better grasp of DNA knowledge than Dalton. Dalton seemed, uh, no disrespect intended, but just seemed very incognizant, very... Uh, 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 I, I don't even know how to say it without, I, I don't want to be disrespectful. Well, I'll but, say this for yeah. me, it was eye opening because I thought Ron Dalton had a much more coherent uh, position on, on why DNA and what you should, what that debate with Yeshub exposed is that Ron Dalton was incredibly confused. You know, I mean, for me, one of the most glaring moments in that debate was uh, Ron Dalton was trying to say that like the people of Papua New Guinea are also Israelites. So, uh, Yeshub explained what haplogroups are found amongst the people of Papua New Guinea. They're closer to European populations. And Ron Dalton said, you know, basically he talked about their morphology. And then he said, I spoke to one of them on the phone and they said they have a story about how they came to those islands. And they came to that area on a boat and they used to have a book of law, which they dropped off the side of the boat and lost. And Yeshub said, so I'm telling you about DNA and he's telling you a story that someone told him over the telephone. Yeah, yeah just, just <laughs> right. It's like, it's like that kind of thing, right? Now, if we could, I'd, I'd like to present your discussion on Clubhouse. This was your discussion on yes, Clubhouse. Yes, I got to speak with uh, Ron Dalton briefly on Clubhouse. Okay. Now, if you just give me a moment so I can run this through my sound mix, if you can no just... No problem. So basically, another thing that came up to set this up, another thing that came up in the debate with between Ron Dalton and Yashub was a question about their uh, haplogroups. And, you know, Yashub clearly said his haplogroup, he's a, he's a carrier of E1B1A. Uh, he has a subclade of B1B1A. And mean, and then when Ron Dalton was asked, he said he has not taken a DNA test yet. And so, you know, people, Yeshu pointed out that he should take one. I mean, you're, you're discussing DNA. Maybe you should take your own DNA. That was a year before this conversation that I had with him on Clubhouse. I wanted to, you know, get an update, see if he had uh, taken a test since then. On the topic of Ron Dalton's DNA or related to that. And these excerpts will run for slightly over four minutes. Here you go. So what I was saying, I narrowed it down to two. I myself, when I first came in. I made the point that you can't determine a person's paternal lineage by their outward appearance. And I noted potential haplogroups that could go back to the Khazars, but I noted that as the Ashkenazim are so diverse, they can't simply be all waved off as Khazars. And so when you have these diverse groups, rather than thinking of the group collectively, and this applies to any group, it even applies to the West African diaspora in the Americas, it's better to think on an individual level than on a group level. So for example, let me use you as an example. I remember when you had your date, debate with Yashub, uh, there was a question about whether you had taken a DNA test. And at the time you said you hadn't. I'm curious, have you taken a D DNA test since then? Have you learned your haplogroup? group? <laughs> ask, let me ask you a question. You know what I teach. So that's really none if, of his business, Ron. You don't even have to. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, that's, that's just a, he's just trying to, um, What's the word for it? <laughs> He's trying to be like, I know I know his game. I know his game. And, and it's none of your business if I took my DNA test. You know what I teach. You know, what it there. you know what I say on the clubhouse. And you know what the facts that I give you are correct and they're sound. 
you know, was there if you want. Yeah. Okay, so what was relevant there is, as I, you know, as you saw on the screen. So, again, someone was asking him about his haplogroup since he makes he puts a lot of emphasis on haplogroups for defining who is an Israelite. And in the past, he said he didn't take a DNA test. By the time I asked him, his response was nervous laughter, hesitation, and then to say that it's none of your business, you know. And for me, as others have pointed out, for me, that's a red flag because I think if Ron Dalton took a DNA test and got E1B1A. I mean, he's been saying for years that E1B1A is an Israelite marker. If he got E1B1A, he would proudly put that out there. He would say, yeah, I took my test and it's E1B1A and that's Jacob's half group or something like that. But yeah. instead, it was nervous laughter and it's none of your business. For me, that's curious. To put it mildly, yeah. that's the most charitable way I could put it is that is curious. Perplexing. It, it tempts one to speculate that maybe he got something that he didn't like.